I got invited to an interview by a top AI company last week, but they only gave me a few days to prepare. And since it's a very high paying job, I thought, let me try to use AI to help me crush that interview. So I'll show you the app that I built. One of the students at my bootcamp actually already built something a bit similar, but I wanted to improve it and make it better. So this is what I created. So when you open the app, you have to specify the URL of the job description that you want to apply to. You choose the type of interview you want, if it's a behavioral lead code or project. And then you tell the AI how much money you're willing to pay it. Because the more money you pay the AI, the better it's going to perform. If you don't pay the AI well, it's not going to really try to help you. It's just going to crack some jokes, maybe mock you and not really do anything besides that. So I found this job description from OpenAI for software engineer. You see, look at the salary from 200K to $370,000. So I'm like, okay, not bad. Let me just copy this job description. Come here. I'm going to drop it. The interview style, let's pick lead code. And then for the money, actually, just to make it interesting, I'm going to put $1. Let's see what it does. So now I'm going to drop my resume. So what it's going to do now is that it's going to scrape the job description from the URL that I've given. It's going to analyze the resume that I've given. And based on all of this information and on the knowledge that OpenAI has, it's going to start an interview process. So this is the interview is you're going to interview with Bob, the interviewer. And since I only gave $1, look at the replies. It's not going to be very serious. It's going to just be joking around. So it says like, oh, you're quite a bargain hunter, aren't you? And then it's going to do this. So it's, it's asking me something. And I'm like, um, I try not to Google it. I'll wait right here. And I'll just say, I don't know. Give me a JavaScript example. And then it just explains basically. And the nice thing also, you see the response is streamed and the rendering is pretty nice. So the code is within the code block, the spacing is properly, indentation and everything is, is nicely done. So this is the project that you'll see how to build in this video. To build this project, we're going to use Next.js. It's a very popular web framework that is used by a lot of companies. Then we're going to use the OpenAI API. Again, super popular API that is built by the creators of ChatGPT. So it's the best AI API that is available. And then we're going to use Puppeteer, which is Again, a famous web scraper. So we're going to use pretty popular technologies that are very good to add to your skill set. By the way, if you're interested in this project and you want to see more projects like this, and you're interested to get my help where I teach you build this project, where I give you all the code, the templates, different ideas of projects where you can jump on calls, and it can help you progress in your project and grow in your career as an AI developer, you can check out lastcodeinventor.com slash bootcamp. This is a private bootcamp that I've created specifically for that reason. So if you're interested, you can just check it out. Now for the architecture of this project, we're going to try to make it simple. We're going to have a front end that is built with Next.js, and this front end is going to call two APIs. One API is going to be the scraper with Puppeteer. It's going to scrape the job description web page. And then the other API is going to be the OpenAI API. So this is what we're going to send. Once we have the resume and we have the job description, we're going to send both of them to this API. It's going to basically process the data, create a beautiful prompt, and then send that to the OpenAI API. OpenAI is going to respond, and this is what is going to start the chat with the AI. So now let's look at the code. I always like to go from top to bottom. So it's a top down approach where I look at the highest level first. So the top level of the app, and then we go deeper and deeper step by step. So here we're going to start at the page level. And you see that at the page level, there is basically the logo. So this is the logo that we have right here. And then there is this component, the wrapper. So we're going to look into what's inside. And the first thing that I always like to do is I look at the state. So what's defined here. And then I look at the return, which is the HTML. And I see that there is an if condition. And if we don't show the chat, then we're going to show the request form. So this is the initial stage we're in right now. And then if this variable is set to true, it means that we're going to show the chat. So there's a few things that we need to do first. And the first one being is we need a way to handle the interview when it's going to start. And um, this is what this function is going to do. So here, the first thing is we're going to define the message that we want to send. So basically, all the inputs of the form, so the job description, the payment, the resume type, everything, we're going to send that to our API. So we're going to structure a prompt here where we basically just, like you see like one by one, we add all these fields. And then actually let me give you full screen so you guys can see more. Then we're going to send that data to the AI. And we're going to use this callback function to initialize the state and the initial text response. We're going to pass it to the chat. What this does is that when we click on the button, it's going to process all the data, it's going to send it to OpenAI, it's going to get the first response from OpenAI. It's going to pass it down to the chat. And so as soon as the chat loads, it directly will have the first message of the AI is already going to be there. You don't need to wait for it. So now what you need is something to set the show chat variable to true, like state variable to true. So we're going to do this and uh, we're going to call this start interview function. And when it's over, this is when we're going to set the loading to false and the chat to true. 
and the stored interview is basically this function that we saw right here so as soon as this function is called and it's finished it means that the whole information was taken it was sent to OpenAI. it got returned and then we have everything that we need so this is on a high level but now what we're going to do is we're going to go deeper into the request form so that you understand how we actually process the resume how we process the job description how we scrape it and then we're going to go into the chat component so if i open the request component right here you see that there is a couple of functions that we need we need the function to read the resume obviously and we need the function to scrape the job description and that's basically it and then we need the function to handle the whole thing all together to just like combine all the data and send it to to the ai if i scroll down you see that there's a bunch of html here it is this is basically the form that you see on the website this is this html code right here so we're going to look into the functions i'm more interested in that right now and the first thing is again if we look at high level we're going to look into this function the handle resume upload this is the bigger function what this does is as soon as the resume is uploaded which for us is kind of like the submission of the form is once the whole form is filled the resume is submitted it automatically sends the form and starts the interview so this is kind of like our our submit function so we set the loading to true because there's a loading to just process all the data then we get the file that was just uploaded if there's no file we show an error but otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to call the two main functions one is that we're going to scrape the job description from the url that we have and the other one is that we're going to read the resume so let's see how this is built first is the scraper right that's the first field that we enter and for that it's literally just we have an ai api i'm going to show you how to build it where we just make this call to that internal api that we have we get the result and then we populate the state with that result the resume though is a little bit more complicated because we're going to use this pdf gs dist library and this code honestly like i'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining it because basically i literally took it from somewhere else i just had to tweak it a little bit because it was a bit tricky like there were some issues with next.js and that dependency i had to like be a little creative but uh, it's just basically processing the resume to extract the raw text from it and that's basically it so once we have this this means that we can read the resume we can scrape the data and we populate all of this inside of this state variable to set interview data and that is sent back to the parent component the wrapper and that and it can use this data to send it to open air is basically how it works so now let's get deeper we saw how the wrapper is composed we saw how the request form is composed but we didn't get one part which is the scraper how does the scraper actually works and for this one <laughs> i don't like to say it but literally this is ChatGPT wrote the exact code for this i had to do a few tweaks uh like add some types and just fix a few issues but literally like i, I never built the web scraper before so this was my first time doing it i knew about puppeteer but i just hadn't used it so i was like okay let me try ChatGPT. let me see if actually can build like a complete api endpoint that does the web scraping that i need and it actually built it like all of it and uh, at first there was like a little bug and i had to like, just prompt it a few times so that it fixes itself but then i got it to work the only thing that is worth mentioning here is that actually the way i use puppeteer is pretty simple because i don't do any complex extraction like i just have a basic web scraper that is gonna load the page take all the inner text from it and that's it so it's going to literally take everything from the page this means that it's going to take the header also it's going to take the footer some links some a bunch of things that we actually don't need but the reality is that from my experience of testing gpt4 is good enough that even if you provide like a job description and a bunch of things around it that are not relevant it's going to ignore all this part and it's going to only focus on the actual job description so technically it doesn't really matter the fact that we're sending like a few extra characters for the header and the footer it doesn't matter much from my experience it's still fine that's why like i didn't do anything too complex to try to like based on different websites how to exactly scrape only the job description to me something simple like this works well so now that this whole part is covered so we see how the wrapper behaves we see how the request form behaves how the scrapper works how we extract the data from the pdf now it's time to dive into the chat the chat component starts by specifying a bunch of different props specifying like objects where it's going to be just like the avatar images for the chat a message type and then we're going to get into the component if you scroll down you see that the rendering is pretty simple there is this function that is going to basically show the chat conversation the form at the bottom that's just the input so this is if i open the chat right here this is the input and this is the chat so we're going to need to see how this function is defined but first we're going to define a bunch of state that this component needs so obviously it needs an input it's going to extract it's going to extract all the data from the props it's going to destructure the props because we're going to need all those fields for our prompts it's going to generate the initial message so the initial message needs to be inside of the structure then we're going to define a bunch of the initial messages that the ai is going to 
need to kind of initialize the, the first state of the app. And then we create the main state variables, which is going to be the chat messages and the AI messages. The chat messages is everything that we're going to show to the user inside of the UI. The AI messages are going to be the array of things that we send to the AI because we send actually a lot more than what we show to the user because we need all the context of the resume and the job description. All of it needs to be sent every time to the AI. Now let's look into the main functions that we're going to use. And the main one being the render response, which is going to render actually the like the chat conversation. And here it's a pretty simple map over the chat messages state variable. And so we're just going to show like an image for the avatar and then we're going to wrap all of it inside of a markdown render just so that it can show like the code nicely and like all the formatting is perfect. But that's basically it. The main thing though is going to be this handle on send message function. So what this is going to do is anytime we type something in the input and we send it is going to make the request to the OpenAI API. So we extract, first of all, the message from the input. We add the message that the user just sent to the chat messages array, like that state variable. And then we're going to send it to OpenAI. That's basically what we do. So we take this whole conversation and we send it to OpenAI every time the user inputs something because the API is stateless. So if you don't provide the context to the conversation every time, it's going to just literally forget. And it will think that you just prompted with something new every time. And so we need to send the whole flow of the messages. And once you have sent that, you update the state of the response that you received. And basically, that's how the chat works. So it's just this. So if I scroll up, you see that we define a bunch of states. And then we have two main functions. One is handling when we send the message and the other one is just handling like the just the visual, like showing the chat. That's basically what it is. Now, just the last thing that I want to mention here is that I've created an auto scroll. So this is just a nice feature so that like whenever the chat goes beyond the viewport, you don't want to have to like manually scroll to see like where, where is the message It's going to automatically scroll down. So the last message is always within the view of the user. But what this means now is that we have covered most of the architecture of the app. So we build the front end, we build the scraper, we build all of the elements, except the last part, which is our internal OpenAI endpoint. So we're going to check this right now. And this endpoint is actually pretty simple. Like whenever you want to build an AI app that has OpenAI, your code is going to look extremely similar to what I have right here. So you import the libraries that you need. We're going to use this AI library from Vercel. It's a pretty nice library because it gives us a bunch of tools that are really convenient to use, like the OpenAI stream, which allows us to stream the response to make it like very smooth. Then we're going to create a client where we literally just do new OpenAI and then we specify an API key. We're going to specify the runtime to be Edge just so that the API runs faster on Vercel. And then we're coming here to the handler. It's a handler for a post request. So the requests that we're going to make to the OpenAI API are going to be only post requests. And the first thing we want to do is we want to extract the messages array from the request that we're doing. Like I said, we always send the full array of messages, the entire state of the app. We send it to OpenAI. So the first thing is just to extract that. And the next thing is to literally just send it to OpenAI. So directly straightforward. We do openai.chat.completions.create. And inside of the create function, we're going to specify a bunch of variables, a bunch of parameters. The first one being the model, then the array of messages. Then we set the streaming to true. And then we set the temperature. The streaming, like I said, is just what allows us to get responses that are very smooth. So instead of sending a request to the open API and waiting 10 seconds until it gives you the full response, what it's going to do is that it's going to give you a response one character at a time. So then the UI looks very nice because you can do something like this. If I just say hello, now it's going to stream. It's going to show the characters one by one. You see? So this is a much better experience than having to wait for 10 seconds until all of it appears in, in one shot. Now we're going to specify the messages, but the nice thing that we're going to do is that we're going to specify a system prompt first. And the system prompt is what tells the AI how to behave overall like throughout the entire conversation. And here we say, I give like a context. I say you're an expert interviewer, specialized in conducting interviews for software engineers. Then I give like a format. I, I give the expectation of the format that is going to be receiving every time. I give an objective of what it's supposed to do, and then I give instructions. This is where I say that if the user doesn't pay you a lot of money, uh, like uh, don't help them much. And if they pay a lot, do a very good job. And then it's basically the instructions. So that, that's what it is. Actually, you might be wondering, why do I align this prompt like this? Like, why don't I give the space? This is because when you use the syntax, actually spaces do matter. So if I would do this here, like when the app sends the request to OpenAI, it's going to also send the spaces here. And that's just extra tokens that I don't need. So I just do what I did here. And then obviously I'm going to send all the messages. So this is the, you start with the prompt, like the system prompt, and then you send all the messages that are in the flow of the conversation that is happening on the front end. Once you have done this, you have sent your request to OpenAI, you need to get it back. 
So now you need to handle the response. And this is going to be very simple because we're going to literally just import what we used from the AI library right here. And this is going to allow us to stream the response. That's it. This is how I build interview GPT. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if there are other projects that you want me to build. But otherwise, if you want more ideas of AI projects that you can build, you can check out this video right here.